Hello everyone, it's time for another edition of Mr. E's Paint.net Tutorials, starring me, Mr. E. Episode 3, Cut It Out. Today we're going to learn about selection and moving tools. Now in order to demonstrate them properly, I'm also going to have to introduce you to the text tool, as well as the pan and zoom tools. Now as always, before we get started, you might want to pause this video and open your copy of Paint.net so you can work along. First thing we're going to do is go up to the upper left hand corner, select File and New. Let's change our widths to 500 wide and 500 in height. Just do something that's a nice square picture. Now I'm going to show you your basic selection tools. I'll pull the toolbox over here so it's easier to see. In the upper left you have your rectangle selection. I'll click on that. And click on the screen on your project and you can draw a box. Like so. Right below it is the lasso selection. This is often used to cut out shapes that are Maybe kind of weird and you just need to go around them and they don't have a defined shape so if you don't quite get it the shape you need the first time you can just kind of keep doing it till you get it right below that is your ellipse selection that does an ellipse but let's say you want perfect circle it's kind of hard to exactly get a perfect circle while you're holding down your left mouse button making your circle if you also hold down the shift button it will automatically make it a perfect circle it will do that same thing with the rectangle selection if you want it to be a perfect square as you're drawing it you hold your left mouse button and press the shift and it will be a perfect square This tool here is the magic wand. It's also a selection tool. It is a lot more powerful than the other selection tools, so it's going to have its own video later in the series. Now let me introduce you to the moving tools. There are these two arrows right here. One's blue, one's white. If you press the white one, you can now move that selection anywhere on the screen. It will not alter anything on the screen, but you can move it where you want. You can also grab the edges, change the size of it. This is handy if you need to copy something. You can float it over what you want to copy. In fact, at this point with your selection and moving tools, if you copied it right now by selecting Control C, it would copy only what's in the boundaries here, only in the flashing rectangle. The other selection tool is the blue arrow. Now this one will not only move the box, but it will move everything inside the box automatically. Notice when I drag it, that white piece I've just cut out of the paper and moved down here. It actually is almost as if you've just cut a hole right here into the paper. You'll notice how that area is a checkerboard gray and white well that is used in almost every graphic editing software to indicate a clear area a transparent area so now I'm gonna undo that go up to the undo button put that right back in there and the next tool that we're going to use is going to be the text tool first I'm going to press the rectangle select and click off the screen to make that box go away. The reason I'm doing that is while that box is on the screen, anything I do in the future, I can only do inside that box. If I drop paint on this empty page, I could only paint inside the box, not outside the box. So in order to do something else on the screen, I need to click out offside the project and it would make that box go away. So again, if I select a rectangle to make that rectangle go away, I move my cursor over here off the screen and then left click makes the box go away now nothing is selected so now for the text tool 
right over here on our toolbox. That T there is your text tool. If you left click on that with your mouse, you will select text. You'll notice that up on top here, it's opened up the font and font size for you, as well as some other font tools. Now we have a white sheet of paper, so I'm going to draw in anything but white. However, my primary color is set to white right down here on the color box. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to go down to my color palette. I'm going to select black. It's changed it to black. Now I can click anywhere on the screen. And we're going to maybe write an invitation. You are invited dot 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 now that's not very big it's not very bold doesn't stand out much as long as our cursor is still blinking and it should stay blinking unless we press enter or click somewhere off the page so let's go up here first of all we're going to change the font you can select whatever you like uh, almost all computers tend to have some version of Arial, so we'll just select that. We're going to change the font size, make it bigger, say 24. No, that's not big enough. Let's go 48. Too big. You can custom change that if you like. I'm just going to type 40 in there. 40 is nice. You have some other tools right over here. You can make it bold, you can italicize it, you can underline it, you can strike it out, you can do all sorts of different things, but we'll shut all those off. Now we're pretty happy with that. Now the next thing we're going to do is deselect the text tool. The easiest way to do that is to go over to the toolbox. Right over here is an open hand. That's the pan tool. If you click on that, it deselects the tools. Nothing you can do with the pan tool will affect your project. The shortcut for that tool is the letter H on your keyboard, H as in hand. Now the reason it's called a pan tool is because you actually use it in conjunction with the tool above it, which is the zoom. Click on that one. So it brings up a little magnifying glass and where I click on the screen, it zooms in. Now there's a number of ways to zoom in paint.net. You can do it from one of the drop down menus. You can do it from down here in the corner. Uh, I often do it by pressing control plus to zoom in and control minus to zoom out. But you can use that zoom tool. This is where if you change to the pan tool, you can kind of drag your image across the screen so you can work pixel by pixel, if you like, in certain areas to recolor it, to draw around it, whatever you'd like to do while you're zoomed in. Okay, now to get back to normal screen, we'll go down here to the bottom and revert to normal screen. All right, very good. We're kind of happy with that, except we really like the text maybe down in the corner and maybe split it on two lines and offset it. That's okay. We'll go back over and grab our rectangle select tool and we're going to grab this now we want to move it and to actually move the selection we're going to click the blue arrow and we can now move this selection but you know what's going to happen when we move this it cuts a hole in our picture this is an early point of contention with a lot of people using paint.net you feel like you're altering you know your picture it's no big deal on a white sheet we could dump white paint in to that hole but what if you have a nice landscape scenery or sunset scenery and you've just typed over it and when you go to move the type you actually create a hole and move part of your picture and it messes up your whole project so how do you avoid this well that just happens to be the topic of our next video as I introduce you to the layer tool Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mysteries Tutorials.